Hi guys, Dean here again, back for another video. I'll say again, it's been a while anyway since the last video. Um, this one may be a tad long. I was going to try and do two separate videos, but frankly, can't be bothered. Um, it takes me long enough to do a video as it is and get it out there to you guys. So um, this is going to be a combined sort of metal rock and non-metal rock. Um, so yeah, initially, um, record store day a couple of weeks ago. Um, didn't bother this year at all. Um, there was nothing particularly on the list that excited me um, or interested me in any great um, deal. So I um, thought, don't see the point in getting up at 5am to sort of queue outside the local record store at 6am onwards until they open three hours later. Um, so I had a chilled out day actually. I did go into um, town. Um, I had a potter around, a couple of record stores, uh, caught some live music as well locally so it was a really good chilled out day still bought a couple of records um but yeah so much more relaxed doing that um but disappointed with record store day just generally because it was the 10th anniversary thought they may do something um you know really big um just just seemed to be a missed opportunity for me um there weren't particularly any major releases of things that you can't really get anywhere else um there weren't particularly that much of an involvement from artists. Again, you know, I thought Record Store Day, it's 10 year anniversary, let's involve some major artists big time. Um, let's do something a bit special, let's do something a bit different to what we've done before. Um, you know, let's maybe vocalize things, maybe about the eBay flippers and let's try and combat that. But um, there seems to be a really lackluster affair this year, so. But it is what it is, um, it's always going to have lovers and haters. I tend to be middle of the road to be honest, I can take it or leave it. Um, if there's something once on the list then I'll go out and get it, if there isn't, there isn't. So. Um, anyway, enough of that. So um, so this is a Vinyl Finds video, um, which I've not done one for a while. Um, not for particular any reason, um, I have picked up records on and off here and there. Um, I have slowed my purchasing down, I must say. Um, just trying to go through, clean my current collection from top to bottom, so I know everything's done and dusted, and uh, trying to listen to stuff as well at the same time. Um, and also trying to get, as I've commented to a few people, trying to get a smaller collection, but a better collection. Um, but anyway, so before this ends up being a half hour video, I'll get cracking on with it. So first of all, I'll do the non-metal stuff. There's only a couple of things I know I want to show, um, even though I bought others, but we'll come to those later. Um, first of all is Cardigan's Life. Now, as the eagle-eyed of you will probably spot, you clever lot, this is not the official cover. Um, this I found on eBay quite recently, actually, um, literally last week. I've uh, been after this album for a while, um, but you can't find it cheaply at all. Uh, normally the minimum price, I think I've seen it, is around £55, £60, pounds, um, and that had issues with it. So um, Anyway, the seller on eBay was um, selling this as a pre-release um, version, so um, after chatting to her, I think it ended up being her partner, um, used to work for a magazine, so he gets sent records essentially. So they just sent out the record in a plain sleeve. Um, and away you go. So I think I paid £16 for this, just for the record, which I thought was an absolute bargain. Um, the grading on it, I think, was VG+. Plus. It came, it did have a scratch on it, sadly, on side A, covering the first three tracks. Um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to pick it up on the camera. What is that? shows in the light but it's quite a prominent scratch and sadly right at the end of track two and the beginning of track three it felt quite deep and i mentioned i, I emailed the uh, person in question and she was really apologetic and said she literally just got it out quick look at the record and whacked it on ebay so um she said by all means send it back if it doesn't play uh, I'll give you a partial refund if it plays and you're willing to keep it, you know, if it clicks or whatever. So I said I'd clean it up, play it that evening. So I cleaned it up, played it. Um, and to be honest, as I said to her, 
Um, there were a few audible clicks on the end of track two and literally heard nothing on track three, which is really weird because that seems to be where the deep cut is. Um, so yeah, I mean, that shows the durability of vinyl in a way that, again, if it was a CD, probably wouldn't have even played. Um, the fact that it played without skipping, because that was my worry, that it was going to skip and essentially just be unplayable. Um, but a few pops and clicks here and there, um, and the really upbeat tracks in all the first three, so um, didn't have any issues at all keeping that. But yeah, it's a cracking album, this one. Um, literally, the whole of side A is non-stop. Um, seven tracks, absolute fantastic. The B-side slows down a bit. It's almost like a different vibe on the B-side. So the side A, as I said, is really upbeat, um, up-tempo tracks, really poppy, really catchy lyrics. Anybody that's not um, familiar with the Cardigans, um, Nina Pearson, I think. I think they are Swedish, if memory serves me correct. Um, they were around in, I mean, this was 1995, hence why it's so bloody expensive to get hold of. Um, yeah, I mean, really, really good band. They had lots of chart success. I think they had about three or four singles off this album. Um, so, yeah, side A is certainly the more popular tracks, um, more commercial tracks. Side B is a bit of a um, sort of come down um, in vibe, not in quality. Uh, really good solid tracks and final track on the album is a cover of Black Sabbath, um, Sabbath Bloody Sabbath, which is a really cool take on the song. They've not tried to recreate the song at all, they've done it in their own style. Um, it works, it works really well for a, you know, a pop version of that. Um, yeah, so cracking album. Um, I just printed out the uh, the front and the back essentially just to put it with it although i couldn't find a decent um, image of the front cover so it's quite pixelated but that will do me for now rather than me paying a hundred pounds for a really nice copy i've got a nice copy there that's playable um if you find the cover with a beat up record in it then i'll grab one if it's cheap enough otherwise i'm happy with that so that's cardigans and life um still want gran turismo again Gran Turismo, the second album, was another corker, um, but that's even more expensive than that. I mean, that, that, if they come up on eBay, they, you're talking 200 plus, 250 pounds, which is just crazy. Um, you know, I've struggled to pay that for an Iron Maiden album, let alone something that I'm not that obsessed with. So, um, second of all, um, me and Mr. Mayo just showed this recently as well, and his Paul McCartney um, seal to reveal archive collection series. This is the Flowers in the Dirt reissue from the said archive collection series. Um, I mentioned Flowers in the Dirt a couple of videos ago um, saying how much I really like this album. This was the album that got me into Paul McCartney via the chap in the record seller. Um, this, uh, I bought this purely because I love Flowers in the Dirt and I really wanted to hear the uh, original demos that Paul did with um, Elvis Costello, um, and I'm glad I did. I think this is a fantastic package. Um, James, if you haven't got this already, Vinyl Professor, I urge you to go and grab a copy. Um, this has made me revisit his back catalogue um, through the Archive Collection series, so I've literally pretty much gone out and purchased most of them, I think by about three, which Band of the Run being one of them, as we were talking about earlier, um, which is just a nightmare to get hold of that one on, on this series. But, um, but yeah, I mean, if the others are anything to go by, then really worthwhile getting them. Um, sound quality of the original isn't, it's been remixed, um, it's been remastered, sorry, not remixed. Um, can't tell a huge difference between this and the original. Um, sounds pretty much on par. I've got really nice copy of the original album so um I don't think sonically there's any vast improvement certainly not that my system is picking up um but the demos sound really good as well so um really happy to get that so yeah so those were the two essentially non-metal um things um so now onto the metal rock category as they say um got a couple of 
maiden related um, things here. First of all, is a 7 inch. And this is a band called Urchin, which some of you may know, some of you may not know. They were a new wave of British heavy metal band. Um, well, yeah, sort of potentially a new wave of British heavy metal band. They were around at that time, essentially. Uh, this was released in 77, um, but it has um, Adrian Smith of Iron Maiden as the frontman, so lead guitarist, lead singer. Um, and again, as a lot of you will know, um, he is quite prominent on some of the backing vocals within Iron Maiden. Uh, if you see them live, as I did last night, fantastic. Um, he also sings um, vocals on Wasted Years. Um, as well, quite prominently, um, it's just a song he wrote um, himself anyway. Um, and there's a few um, on Reach Out, I think he did on the, the B-side of Stranger in a Strange Land and so forth. So vocally he's very proficient and obviously went on to do a solo album, ASAP. Um, but yeah, so this is quite difficult to get hold of. I've seen a few copies of these on eBay, I've never really seen one in the wild. Um, so I think I got this for quite a good price. Again, I've seen these sell on eBay for anywhere sort of 200 upwards. I got this for well under 100 pounds, so I was very happy with that. Um, there are two versions of this. Um, this is the normal standard company sleeve. There's a version with um, an urchin uh, related sleeve on it. So it's got a write up on the back uh, on one side of the band. Um, they did two singles and that was it pretty much. Um, so this is the first single of theirs I've got, um, Black Leather Fancy. Um, so I just need to keep an eye out for the other one as well, which again is equally as rare, um, if not potentially rarer. So really happy to get hold of that, so that was pretty cool. Um, second one, which again um, is my first of its kind and also made in related, is this. Um, now again, some people may be familiar with this type of thing, some people aren't. This is a shaped picture disc, as you can see, but it's uncut, as you can also see. So it's still in its original form, essentially, when it comes from the, uh, the pressing machine, um, prior to it being cut to shape, ready for um, distribution. Um, and again, normally these, I mean, Chuck and I made an uncut thing, you're talking hundreds of pounds for the more common things. And again, I don't know number wise how many are actually out there. Um, this I've seen and normally sells or is normally requested for around the 50, 60 mark. I paid 10 pounds for this. So I was very chuffed. Um, I think I got it when it was finishing, so like mid morning to lunchtime during the week. So I think I managed to hit whenever the else was at work. Um, so really happy with that. This is my first uncut picture disc. I'm sure it won't be my last. I'd love to get hold of the Iron Maiden ones. Um, but yeah, some of those are expensive. There's a Trooper uncut disc on at the moment, which is currently at about 2,100. And I think you know, the last one sold for just under four, if memory serves me right, which was about a year ago. So um, just shows you the you know, people out there with the money and you know, they are very collectible. Um, but again, I don't know the numbers, so I'm not quite sure how rare they actually are. Um, you wouldn't have thought many would come out of the, the pressing plants in that state, but I'm assuming some are given to um, um, employees as tests and just sort of tokens or whatever, and some obviously are sent out uh, for quality control to the band and so forth, but um, to the record label. But beyond that, who knows? Anyway. Uh, next up is Warrant, the Enforcer. Uh, Warrant, not those of Cherry Pie fame, um, but uh, the German band, the German anyway, on the noise label. Uh, this was picked up purely on the strength of some, um, probably about three or five minutes worth of airtime by the Metal Theologian. One of his videos, he had it on the background and he mentioned it what a cracking album it was so I purely picked it up on that basis and he was not wrong it's a fantastic album from start to finish um, again not a cheap album to um, find or to buy um, there's a few of them around but they fetch um, around the 35 to 50 mark normally um, 
again I pick this up on the sort of bottom scale of that um, amazingly and it is a really lovely clean copy so really happy to grab that one. Um, next it's Metallica's Load um, yeah I think probably I don't need to say much about this album um, most people are aware of it um, this was potentially the album that after the Black Album they had a bit of a change in style as you can see from the photo um, not particularly a change in musical style because Black Album was you know quite different to Justice For All uh, I really like this album um, to be honest I've liked most, most Metallica albums I really liked Saint Anger which I know a lot of fans didn't don't know why because to me Saint Anger sort of represents almost what they were early days but um, I picked this up you can get this as a reissue on the Blackened label their own label but the quality of those Blackened reissues are horrendous from what I've heard um, and I have heard sonically some of those and I just wasn't happy at all so the albums I don't have already um, which are not many um, I'll try and find the original releases so this is the Vertigo release it came out uh, in 96 um, I'm sure once cleaned up this will sound superb I've not cleaned it yet so I need to get around to doing that um, and finally is um, Mastodon's new album uh, so can't say I'm aware of much of Mastodon's material so this is probably going to come at a completely different angle to what most people come at it from um, I did see Mastodon supporting I made them way back went to see them in Rome probably about did I say it, 10 years ago at least um, can't remember which tour it was on and they were opening with Motorhead um, and the Maiden obviously headlining um, they were definitely sort of heavier than this album I would class them in probably similar sort of vein to what the early Opeth stuff is and again I've not really listened to much early Mastodon purely because I thought they were in the same sort of bracket um, I heard this was coming out so I listened to it digitally on the way to work a couple of times really liked it so snagged a copy of the album on vinyl um, because I think the numbers are quite limited so for the first press I'm not sure if they're doing another press um, this is not the Mastodon that most people will know and again I've not particularly listened to previous albums to this I've listened to Leviathan I think which was heavier than this this certainly has a more commercial bent to it Show Yourself is out and out commercial metal pop whatever you want to call it um, there's no dispute in that say what you will um, yeah the album is heavier in places but this is obviously Mastodon um, potentially doing what Opeth did taking a new direction taking the direction they want to go in rather than the direction potentially they started out at um, which is not a problem for me I mean I really like this album I've listened to this now probably a dozen or so times uh, either digitally on um, vinyl it sounds great on vinyl as well um, so really happy to have this um, yeah it's um, I don't know um, yeah I don't know what to say really um, I don't know where I was going with it actually um, Opeth I know obviously changed their direction because um, Michael Ackerfeld, the lead singer, guitar player, and I suppose the band leader, um, wanted to um, not stay in the same um, vein. He says, you know, as people you grow, um, your tastes change um, and sort of expand, so why shouldn't you band? Um, I can see that, and I can see the progression through Opeth, certainly, that they've gone down the more progressive route. Um, and that's fine, and I love Opeth for it. Um, can't really comment on Mastodon because I've not been there from the start. I've not gone back through the catalogue to see how they've progressed. If they've progressed, or literally if they've jumped. There seems to be a big jump from Le uh, Leviathan to Ma um, Emperor of the Sand, this one. So, who knows? But anyway. Um, 
by all means comment below if you uh, have any uh, feedback to give me on that one um, or anything else that I've shown today. Um, so yeah, I'll um, hopefully do another video over the weekend. I've got the day off today, hence why I'm managed into a video. Um, I'm due a maiden update video, so uh, I shall um, potentially talk about that this weekend. Um, but until then, thanks for watching guys. See you later.